Now, perhaps you've seen the news, the latest horror story from the nightmarish multicultural hell project in Sweden. If you haven't, then I will give you a brief overview of what happened. This is Mikael, a father, 39 years of age. Him and his 12-year-old son were going to the local swimming hall for a nice training session and a youth gang, youth gang, I'm using that term so I don't get into legal trouble, uh, hate speech or something like that, because you see in Sweden it's worse to actually point to the problem than to commit actual crimes. So they were harassed by a youth gang. Mikael decides to go back and confront them, to tell them off, to say, don't harass me and my son, we're just trying to enjoy our day. And in response, this youth gang, they shoot him in the head, killing him, and then his son, his 12-year-old son, has to call the police himself and then calls his grandmother, saying what happened. So yeah, that is the that is the story, if I got all of the details right. Now, I was actually unsure if I should make this video because it's so such a grim, such a grim happening, but uh, it's for the greater good to actually talk about it so people know what's going on. Now, hard to talk in this situation, of course, um, because what to say, uh, but I still want to say something, I want to say that the solution is for good men to get into positions of power and influence and then gain as much political power as possible. And men with political will or women with political will can actually implement positive change. And the only way we can end this nightmare is to initiate a large-scale repatriation process. I've said this so many times now, I wish everyone had listened when I said this 10 years ago, not even me, because there are older guys, older guys in Sweden, they've said this for 30 years. They've said this for a very long time, they warned even in the 90s that this will only get worse unless something is done. And what was the response then when these guys, Jimmy Åkesson, for example, um, the response to him, hatred, scorn, ridicule, and now they say these mainstream politicians in the social democrats and the moderates, they say we have been naive. No, you haven't been naive. It just instead of listening, you attacked the guys who were telling you these uncomfortable truths. So now we're in a situation where, again, politicians from the social democrats, from the moderates, they go to the place of the shooting, of the murder, place flowers, cry crocodile tears, talking about how tough measures are needed, talking about how sad they are, how shocked they are, but no one is believing this anymore because only a few years ago you've been talking about how great mass immigration is, how great the multicultural project is, and all of these usual talking points. Diversity is our strength, but now diversity has killed a father in front of his 12-year-old son, and that is because of you, and I'm talking now to the mainstream politicians in Sweden. You are to blame for this, you have blood on your hands. And also, if I'm being a bit... If I'm giving a bit of tough love here to my own Swedish population, for everyone who's voted for these parties, you also have blood on your hands. Because it's a direct result of a mass immigration project. Open borders, and this is not only in Sweden, you have all over the West, all over Europe, you have the same story over and over again. The European population, that they get brutalized on a daily basis. Not a day goes by without you hear something about a rape or a murder or some young guy getting beaten up, robbed, humiliated. And we are the bad guys for talking about it. We're not the bad guys. The politicians who have enacted this change, who have opened the borders and let these individuals prey on the natives, they are the culprits. They are the bad guys. So, of course, it makes me a bit angry to see these politicians come out and talk about how sad they are. And now, of course, today, the day after, yesterday was the big news. Today, life is moving on for everyone except for the family of the guy who who got shot. So the politicians quickly changing focus uh, had their talking points yesterday saying that we should all come together. We need tough measures. And the next day, if someone is proposing something like repatriation or tougher penalties, then it's back to talking about human rights, human rights for individuals who shoot a father in front of his son. They don't have any human rights if they've done such a crime. So I would also like to say that I wish for the Sweden Democrats, for anyone in the Sweden Democrats, if you're watching this, I would encourage you to please work a bit harder. Were I in the Sweden Democrats, I can assure you I would work day and night. Now, of course, I am too radical. I'm too radical to be in the Sweden Democrats because they listen to the leftists saying this individual is such a radical. No one really understands why. Maybe it's because I've proposed the actual solution. So I'm too radical 
to fit in a party because I proposed the solution of re-immigration. So there we are, I can just hope that you take this to heart, that you start working a bit harder because you are in a position of power, you are the second largest party in Sweden and people voted for you and many voted for the moderates as well, the third largest party. Uh, they are in coalition now, so the Sweden Democrats and the moderates. They voted for you because they want an end to this Gotham City nightmare. So, so nothing really more to say. Rest in peace to Mikael. Incredible tragedy. And again, these tragedies will continue to occur until real change is implemented. XXO. Boom.